from Appleton, Wisconsin. This is the Anderson Pens Podcast. Welcome to Anderson Pens Podcast, episode 446 for Thursday, June 30th, 2022. This week, we have a slightly older Mr. Anderson. We also have banter news updates, my ink of the week, the Panda Pen from Retro 51, a Winnie the Pooh set from Retro 51, a slew of birthday wishes, a contest winner, a new contest, plus two new pens from Estabrook that we can't yet talk about. Coming soon. (laughs) Hey, Eric. Hey, Brian. Do you know... uh... Bees, here's a here's a fun fact I bet you didn't know. Bees are actually allergic to pollen. I did not know that. Yeah, so apparently when exposed to pollen, they develop hives. That I have heard. <laughs> Very good, <laughs> Mr. Andrew. Very good. I like that one. I have a question for you. Um, where are average products manufactured? I have no idea. At the satisfactory. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Justin just shakes his head at me. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Yes. You have not seen it yet? Nope. We'll get to your birthday in a minute. Uh, the location bumper <laughs> was uh, the Hearthstone Historic House Museum right here. Yes, uh, yes. Have you ever been there? I have never been there. Never actually. been there. Yeah, I've driven past it. And- A million times. I have never been inside. I've driven past it. It looks interesting. Uh, The Hearthstone Historic House was the first private residence anywhere in the world to be illuminated using hydroelectricity from a central Edison system. Fascinating. Yes. The switch was thrown on September 30th, 1882, only two weeks after the first ever Edison Central Station, which was powered by steam, was operational in New York City. That's two weeks. Two weeks. And uh, I suppose we used, because we have the river. Yeah, it's right on the river. The residence still contains the original Edison electroliers, original light switches, and some of the world's only examples of original Edison wiring in situ. In situ. I've always wanted to say that. (laughs) It is also an excellent example of Queen Anne Victorian style architecture. Yes. The house was the residence of Henry James Rogers. Who was that? Probably a paper magnet. Exactly. A paper company executive. We're just, so... Just guessing, because... Paper-centric this is, here. This is paper country. Yeah, yeah. Um, usually I talk about days in the future, but we're going to talk about days in the past. Because yesterday, yesterday was your birthday. It was. Yeah. You have a good time? I had a great time. Where did we go? What I did we know. drink? <laughs> I forget. I have no idea. I'll but, let you know. <laughs> tomorrow, Friday, is July 1st. And July 1st is Canada Day. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that, Canada. Go for it. Go ahead. That's about it. That's all I got. It's the anniversary of Canadian Confederation, July 1st, 1867, sometimes referred to as Canada's birthday. It'll be 155 years old. Just three Brian Andersons. Uh, no relation whatsoever to Canada's birthday, Canada Day. Also on July 1st, it's International Joke Day. Uh, and speaking of jokes, Brian, <laughs> what? Uh, which are the strongest days? Saturday and Sunday, because all the rest are weekdays. Oh. <laughs> I've got a lot for July 1st. I bet you do. Also July 1st. <laughs> I bet you do. Tomorrow, July 1st, National U.S. Postage Stamp Day recognizes the ease and simplicity with which we can send and receive emails, celebrate by mailing a letter or postcard. I should also mention that if... If I'm not mistaken, July 10th, postage goes up here in the States oh. from 58 cents to 60 cents. But you can buy your stamps now and they're forever stamps. It's a good investment. Also on July 1st is National Postal Worker Day, recognizes postal workers all across the nation and, and encourages us to show our appreciation. Take time to thank your local postal worker. I'm going to leave a little thank you note on my mailbox. I am. Okay. Yeah. Um, also tomorrow, July 1st, the 109th edition of... The Tour de France France. begins. Stage one starts tomorrow. That is, I understand, individual time trials. Copenhagen. Yeah. Where does the Tour de France begin? (laughs) It's uh, not an uncommon occurrence. Um, Starts tomorrow, ends 3,328 kilometers or 2,068 miles later on July 24th in Paris. 
July 24th is also, in Paris, the first edition, the beginning of the first edition of Women's Tour de France. Which you never see because it's never televised. Uh, it probably won't be this time either. At least not here, anyway. Uh, cycling. In May, I put 130 some odd miles on my bike. And Good my for goal for June was 200. And just this morning, I hit 305. Good for you. Congratulations. So the goal for uh, July is going to be 400. 400. We're going to just try that. It's reasonable. I was going to leave this one out because I've already had so much, but once I read it, I couldn't. This Saturday, July 2nd, is National I Forgot Day. Is that so? Uh, yeah, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> Created by Gay Anderson. Any relation? Uh, I don't know. I don't uh, think so. Of Indiana. Of it? No, no, okay. no. She was going through a period of her life when she was having difficulty remembering things. She created this day to just relax and allow herself to forget. Asked when she created National I Forget Day, Mrs. Anderson said, Ms. Anderson said, I don't quite remember. <laughs> That's why I had to put it in there. And, of course, this coming Monday is July 4th, or 4th of July, Independence, uh, Day. Independence Day here in the United States. And uh, your final reminder, June is National Adopt Cat Month. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. You're going to go? Uh, I'm going to look at uh, are you really? petfinder.com. Are you really? We'll, we'll find something. Um, special announcement. This is about tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, July 1st, the 20% discount on Esterbrook products. Uh, is being discontinued. So uh, today is the last day to take advantage of the current uh, discounted pricing. Discounted pricing. So Estherbrook SDs and uh, JRs. Last day. Today. Last day. Last day is today, and we have some. We, we do have we, some. We do yep. have some. Yep. We do have some. Um, speaking of segwigs, let's talk about YouTube. Last Friday on YouTube, we posted Brian's top five modern goat pens. Uh, I was there. Yes. I was there. I liked them. Last Sunday on Anderson Penn's uh, Sunday Brunch Menu 12, you showed me how to resack a fountain pen. Of course, we filmed that so everybody else yes. could see me. Yeah. Uh, you I did think a good I job. succeeded. You did yeah. a good job. I mean, no, no. I did, wasn't as good as you, but it was my first time ever. So good. thank you for that. And you got lots of thanks in, in the comics. Uh, you do good work there, Mr. Mr. Anderson. Tomorrow, Friday, we're going to uh, publish Steph's Top 5 Orange Inks. Awesome. Uh, some of which I don't think are orange, but uh, <laughs> one of the ones that I don't think is very orange is, was the one I said was my favorite. So, okay. And a reminder that this Sunday, there is no Sunday brunch. No Sunday brunch. No Sunday brunch. So sad. But speaking of ink, I have an ink of the week. Oh. Do you know what that is? Is this the right one this week? Yes. I, <laughs> I checked before we <laughs> hit record. Uh, this is, you could read right there. Pilot Orochizuku Sui Gyoku. Yeah, that is um, one of the three new yeah. Orochizukus oh, that nice. came out. That it, is a real emerald. Yes, uh, they call it uh, emerald gemstone. The Su, Sui Gyoku, I think, means emerald. Okay. Uh, and it is absolutely emerald. Very easy to read. It is. It's uh, nice. And I like the... I think this is true of all inks. I like the swab more than I like it coming out of the pen. But it's uh, mm -hmm. it's very nice coming out of the pen. But the, the swab and the handprint make it look artistic. Um, no show through, good flow, no feathering. Cleanup was an eight on this. Eight, okay. And in fact, uh, my hand was very green. Uh, looked like some sort of Grinch. <laughs> tried and tried to get it off. And then not all of it came off, so it looked like I had frostbitten hand. Oh, my goodness. I had to use bleach because you can't go around. You can go around town with a little bit of red or a little bit of blue, but green? No, people think something's, <laughs> something's wrong with Make your hand. Make them ask. Make them wonder. Uh, this comes, of course, in the beautiful yes. Ido Shizuku bottle that is 50 mils, and we also sell, I believe, samples. Samples. Uh, yeah, three how much? Mil, three mil samples. Three mil samples. What do scholars eat when they're hungry? Academia nuts. Brian. Yes. What's all that bamboo over there? This is adorable. Oh, isn't it? you've got the panda. This is the Retro 51 uh, Smithsonian National Zoo panda. Comes in a nice tube. It's a really long it says name. panda on it. But it's and nice. look at all the pandas. It's, it's lovely, not just one yeah, panda. They're everywhere. They're, they're everywhere. doing all sorts of things, laying down. We talked bamboo. about these last week, I believe, but we did not have them in our hands. Yep. And 
I knew they were going to be nice from the pictures, but they're nicer in, in real life. They're, they're cute. Nicer. They're really cute. Lovely shade of, of green, too. The Retro 51 Smithsonian Rollerball in the National Zoo Panda design is just too darn cute. The light green background highlights stalks of bamboo and pandas in various poses and activities and is printed on a textured lacquer barrel. The antique silver accents complete the look. The Smithsonian logo is found on the top finial, and the pen is packaged in a commemorative Smithsonian panda tube. I have the tube, and um, I have... Would you call these activities? Well, they're doing something. They're not really. Yeah, doing something. <laughs> we need to animate them. Yes. We'll have Justin do that. Generally, I just keep it on my desk. You do that. And do this. Yep. There you go. Yep. Uh, but, of course, I do that with the Palmer. Well, this is very tempting. This is cute. This and is it has a little tempting. texture to it. And who doesn't like pandas? I, I think we... It's adorable. It's, yeah. We all like pandas. And it's almost diamond <laughs> A theme. <laughs> We've got a theme. Uh, I have also written up notes for the Winnie the Pooh collection. We have one here, which is already sold. It's I already sold, yeah. And we're, so we're going to keep it packaged. It's all sealed up. Uh, yeah. Justin will show some pictures of these pens. Uh, they are so cute. They are, yeah. Uh, it, and I, I didn't think I was much of a Winnie the Pooh uh, fan. I didn't dislike him, but once I read all the how they made them and all the, their marketing is very good. And yes. yeah, it looks yeah. like a little book. It's, a, it's, it's supposed to be a book. Adorable. This is uh, apparently a copy of the original book. Okay, it, it was. Okay. It looked just like that. Um, yeah, just why don't you tell us all about it? It's a lot of. It's a lot, a lot of words. We got a lot of pictures to show. Retro 51 is delighted to share this new collection decorated with artwork in quotes from this timeless book. Three rollerballs in one pencil come packaged together, sold as part of a limited edition of 926 sets. Each writing instrument features story snippets and original illustrations. The pastel lacquered barrels have been printed with the original pen and ink drawings with added colors protected with a gloss finish and stonewashed pewter accents. The roller balls are topped with B for bear, HB for helping bear, and BB for brave bear. The top rings are engraved with a matching limited edition number. The green gift box is designed after the original book that was wrapped in a forest green cover with gold foil stamped art. As you open the magnetic closure box, you'll see E.H. Shepard's illustration of the 100 acre wood adorning the inside cover just like the book. And each writing instrument is securely stored within the foam insert, giving them a framed composition complete with extra lead and erasers. He doesn't know there's a page two. <laughs> no, <there's> oh! A... <laughs> it's 100 acre wood. He just spelled it funny. Acre wood. Because it was a kid's book. Okay. Uh, we are sold out because this is the last yes. one. And it sold just before we went on the air. But Lisa's got one in, in Chicago. Lisa has one so in Chicago. Get yourself to Chicago. So. Because they are cute. Uh, we're gonna do something different today. Okay. Um, I'm nervous. Don't be nervous. You're gonna be a, a pen expert who happens to own a pen store. Okay. And I'm gonna be a customer because okay. uh, I got here before you did today. Yes. You and did. while Justin was setting How did you up, get in? <laughs> well, <laughs> I have ways. <laughs> Justin was setting up. I walked around the store and I found things that I was interested in, okay. as if I were a customer. Okay. One of the things I was interested in was this, and you're gonna tell me all about it. And and what I don't understand why it hasn't sold yet. <laughs> Uh, it's because it's fantastic. This really. is really cute. Uh, I would call this an Estherbrook pastel pen, but I bet it's something like a CH or something. Uh, it is an Estherbrook pastel. It is a pastel. Um, it is a, a, a CH. Um, two for two. Two for two. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, you know, pastel light blue. Um, the smallest of the Estherbrook pens, uh, even shorter than an SJ. Um, but uh, really cute. They originally came with, uh, you could get them with matching pencils. They would come in a little uh, vinyl, what they call a petite pack, so you could throw it in your purse. Uh, marketed uh, and, and designed towards women back Can in I the 1950s. Uh, no, I would not. Don't post it. Uh, the material in the pastel pens is very fragile. Okay. And where, if you look where the lever is here, uh, oftentimes what happens is people will post and the cap will go over the lever, which causes stress on the cap, and then oh. the cap will crack. So, because it looks in beautiful condition, yep. I, I assume uh, the sack is good in it. Yep. yep. Uh, I can't understand why this is still yes. on the shelf. Yeah. And so that caught my eye. Yeah. And let's hope it doesn't catch and, my wallet and, and on like the way say, out the door. You can post it if you want to be really careful. No, when Mr. Estabrook says I wouldn't post, 
and this is a person who likes to post pens. I'm no, well, never they post. don't make those anymore. Right. So, you know, <laughs> this also caught my eye. And Isn't I, that cool? I hope you know enough to tell me all about it. Uh, this is the uh, the Lamy 2000. Uh, this is the uh, the Blackwood uh, ballpoint with, okay. uh, with the desk set. This sits on your desk? Yes. Uh, when it's on your desk, I guess you can leave it extended you, so that it's always at the ready? Well, it's a ballpoint, so it's not like it's... I don't know if it... Oh, that would just be too if much. It, it, if it, I had to take there. it from that and and, and do that, that's, yeah, too, that's much. too much. That's too much. But no, but it, it looks like it fits. It, if I wanted to travel with it, I would. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Lamy two thousand mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. ballpoint, you said. Yes, ballpoint. yes. Blackwood. Yeah. So this is this is not the Macrolon. It's not it's not Macrolon. No, Macrolon. Yeah. This is wood. Yeah. That is black. Yes. That is cool. And it comes with this base. It comes with the base. Correct. Okay. I, uh, you can get it without the base, but the base is pretty cool. The base. Well, that is what caught my eye. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The base. They don't make that sense I, I knew, much I, anymore. I knew it was know? a Lamy 2000. I said, "What is that?" And the third and last thing. Oh, you know what eye. this is. I uh, well, but I don't own one. You, you don't. Uh, but own one. Justin okay. does. So sell me this pen. Just, Justin has one of these. Yes. This. Well, he bought it from you. I don't remember that. And, and first of all, it comes in a very nice box. It comes in a very nice box. This is the only way to get this ink. That's the only way to get that bottle of ink. Yeah, you, with a little pedestal. This. Yeah. Uh, this, of course, we're talking about the Pilot Custom 823. This is the amber version. Amber. It also comes in. Uh, it co- comes in smoke, smoke with gold trim. Um, it this has. Is not a piston filler. Is not a piston filler. It has Pilot's number 15, uh, larger nib, so it's nice large, nib. larger than the 74. Real nice looking, uh, single tone. But this is a vacuum filler, so it fills by pulling this out, just like the VAC 700. So it fills on the downstroke. It fills on the downstroke. In fact, you can even see right here where the in, the barrel wall gets thinner. Yes, it does. So when it gets there, oh, that creates it a vacuum. Oh, okay. And it pulls, so the, the downstroke in. creates the vacuum. Yeah. Then it releases at the bottom, and, and the then ink sucks comes back in. in. Yeah. Yep. And you can use this as a squirt gun, right? Uh, <laughs> I suppose you could. <laughs> and it's a nice size. It's a nice size. It's a yeah. very nice size, and I like being able to see through. But it's not. That, it's not Lisa too would not like that. Lisa would not. Lisa like would it, not yeah. like that because she doesn't like to see her. Ink. Well, the caveat with this, though, it being amber or smoke, whenever you put ink in it, it does have it. You, you can't really tell color. It just looks dark. So, uh, well, yes, but you you can test the ink yes. to see with the color. Yes, what you want to see with an ink window is how much ink do you have left in here, or you want to see the color. We'll get a Twisby. <laughs> this is very nice. It is a nice pen. Um, yeah. I asked Justin if this was the favorite pen, his favorite pen mm-hmm. that he owns. And uh, he said either this or the Vanishing Point. Because Vanishing Points uh, yeah, are uh, really yeah, nice they're, and they're convenient. Handy, they're handy, yes. But that is beautiful. So, it's like, And it's, a, and it's an, a really affordable um, price point. Uh, the Vanishing Point? The A23. Okay, how much is it? It's under three hundred bucks. Under three hundred. Under three hundred bucks. So that gives it a gold nib. Yes. Yeah. And a, a nice size nib too. Yeah. Yeah. See, don't don't let me in the store before you get here, please. Why did the computer get glasses? To improve its website. Brian. Yes. <laughs> you. As you may recall, were the contest I for was last the contest, week. yes. Uh, all people had to do was wish you a happy birthday in the comments section. I uh, brought some with me. Okay. Um, Steve Ma said, happy birthday, Brian, and many more trips around the sun. Yes, yes, many more. Thank you. Greg M says, happy birthday, Brian. What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, first of all, do you plan to grow up? Uh, uh, maybe when I retire? Maybe. <laughs> maybe when I retire? Handmade by Lorelai said, happy birthday to Bri- to you, Brian Anderson. I hope your day is filled with all the watches, pens, and inks your heart Ooh. desires. Ooh, that's I like, very that's nice, a nice wish. wish. Yeah. 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 Thank you. John Toledo, happy birthday, Brian. The banter is great. I'll have to make a list of these stops and take an Anderson Pens podcast tour one of these days. I assume <laughs> we're talking about the location bumpers. Yeah. And yes, yeah. they are all yeah. here. We're going to have to produce a map yeah. that you can hand out. You should, yes. <laughs> hand out. All within walking distance. Uh, so far, yes, yeah. pretty much. Uh, the the one from today is a little far, so, yeah, but you can do it. Yeah. You can do it. Uh, Kathy, happy birthday, Brian Anderson. I always look forward to the weekly podcast and the jokes. Happy birthday! She said, "Happy birthday!" After the and the jokes. I, I wonder. And the jokes. <laughs> Nicholas Adams, happy birthday! Oh, here's an idea. 
What about visiting the paper museum, I think, for your birthday, hmm. before the celebration? But we did admit that neither one of us had been there no. last week. So we should we should go. We should uh, field trip. Yeah, field trip. Arabella Holzapfeld, happy birthday, Brian, and remember, uchu chigunatach. If you know, you know. <laughs> you know. If you know. Thank you, Arabella. You, you stuck around last <laughs> nice. week. Nice. David Nelson, happy birthday, Brian. FYI, Diet Mountain Dew is my favorite go-to soda as well. Yes, yes. it's very popular. It's not my favorite, but it's like my second. Yes. Uh, I'll often uh, go for it. BD, uh, happiest of birthdays to my newfound birthday buddy, Mr. Anderson. Ah. Many happy returns. BD, happy birthday to you as well. Beth Cunningham, happy birthday, Brian. I hope you enjoy the day. Hey, Eric. Uh-oh, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> it was seconds before I repeated the werewolf pun. pun. It, I said 20% of the audience was going to retell it before the weekend, and Beth says only took her seconds. Nice. Uh, this one was heartfelt, I thought. Okay. Dennis Volpe. Uh, happy birthday, Brian. I thank you for introducing and teaching me so much about pens, inks, and helping me find the love of collecting fountain pens. It has helped me keep my sanity during the pandemic <laughs> and introduced me to, uh, to new and interesting people. And he's not the only one who feels that way because you do have a wealth of knowledge. You do share it willingly. You're just a nice guy. It's his birthday. We have to say that, right? <laughs> you should see what they say off the air. <laughs> <laughs> he probably records it well. <laughs> As he said, I had a very enjoyable visit on a rainy day a few weeks ago. This is someone else who's going to say something nice about you, I'll hmm. bet. Thanks and happy birthday, Brian. You were very generous with your time and expertise. Yeah, that describes hmm. you. The Lamy Studio LX Black has been a joy to awesome. use. Uh, Eric Schroeder, happy birthday, Brian. Hope you have another 51. Thanks for all that you've taught us. There's the fire department saying happy birthday. Thanks for all that you've taught us <laughs> about pens and on Sunday brunch shows. Oh. Chad Herring, hey, as someone who also has a birthday this week, happiest birthday happy wishes birthday. to you, Brian. Happy birthday, Chad. And we have a winner. Okay, so great. All of this uh, was a contest, actually. And $32 gift It was the a $51 gift $50. certificate. <laughs> and this week's winner is Stuart Riley. Stuart wrote what? Congratulations. Congratulations. Happy birthday, Brian. I wish you many more years to come. The diet drink and color of ink was good to know, but my Mont Blanc 149 looks a lot like my campfire coffee. Great video, Brian and Eric. <laughs> Stuart, if you'll write to me, eric at andersonpens.com, we will take care of getting that uh, credit to your Anderson Pens account. I have some follow-up comments, not necessarily about your birthday, but it might be mentioned. Oh, my goodness. Jonathan Montalvo. <laughs> oh, I didn't go over this with you before. No, I, so, I have no idea what's going happy on. Happy 51st National Brian Anderson Day. Oh, so I should have okay, mentioned that. Okay. And a question. Esterbrook makes the MV adapter for their SD pen, which is great as you can utilize their vintage nibs with that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, no such adapter exists for the JR. Do you believe that they will eventually make an MV adapter for the JR? He does continue to say that he emailed them, but they were vague. Um, do you, have you heard anything? I have not heard anything. Oh, you've, uh, mum. Mr. Anderson is remaining mum. Uh, interpret that as you will. Possibly. Possibly? Possibly. Really? I was going to say absolutely not, because they would have done it by now, but he must well, know something. Okay, so I would, I, I would bet on that one. You'd, you'd bet on. I that. would bet on. That oh, one. okay. Well, there you go, Jonathan. But, uh, but when? When? Yeah, when. <laughs> and Brody Limbruggen, when are there going to be pens made like the Vintage Flex? There is a very large loyal community fan base just for Vintage Flex because that's all they write with. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go first and then you can correct me. Okay. I think it was a very painstaking process. They had to manipulate the gold many, many times to get it to be flexible and then retain its shape, go back into shape. And I think that no manufacturer is willing to do that because they'd probably have to charge so much money. Let's see what Brian Anderson says. Yeah, that's your your statement's probably not. You know, it's probably pretty close. Uh, I don't know the process involved in making a nib, and, and and for some, it's it's kind of a lost art. We don't know how they made them, but um, because every manufacturer did their their nibs differently. Oh, that'd be a whole different ballgame if we but, didn't know how to do it. But I agree that it, 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 it would be a painstaking process, but what passes as flexible now doesn't come close to 
uh, what vintage pens come to. And I think it's, it's too much work. It's too much of a warranty issue because you will get people who they want to see how far you can flex it and then it will, it will go too far. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there's a warranty issue in, in, involved in that decision and it would be very expensive. If someone could figure out how they were, how it, how they were made, they could make some and sell some, but I don't know how big that market is. For before yeah, the I mean, price you know, they would have some, to pay. Some companies have cut, have have come really really close. You know, Omas uh, extra yes. flexible nibs were were really nice. Many of the modern flexible nibs are are, are good enough. Yes, uh, yeah. but nothing will nothing that I've tried has matched. They're, they're fairly stiff. They're yeah, fairly stiff. They're fairly stiff. So, but that makes them probably less likely. To less move. likely to to be to become an issue to spring them for sure. I have a new contest. Okay. A new contest. Uh, this time, it's another counting contest. Okay. Oh, this, I would this like, is I would like you to answer this one. The, the 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 question I would like you to answer in the comments below is: How many bottles of ink do you have? Not empty bottles, and not samples. Just bottles of ink that have at least enough ink still in them for one more fill of a pen. Mm. How many bottles of ink do you have? I, I'm going to count on this one. I'm going to estimate now, but I'll count for next week. Give me an estimate. Uh, less than a million. Me too. Fifteen. Less than fifteen. Yes. Maybe less than. Are you counting Lisa's too? No. Oh, no. yours. <laughs> no. Uh, I have less than fifteen. I'm pretty sure I have less than yeah. fifteen. But uh, we've counted notebooks. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and these don't have to be unopened. Although that would be something else. If you know how many unopened bottles oh, of ink. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, usually you get a bottle and you, you use it from time to time. Yeah. And occasionally one runs out of ink. So that would be an empty bottle. Don't count that one. Count how many bottles of ink you have that still have at least one fill, one fill. in them. Yeah. Put your answer down below in the comments, and next week we'll share the statistics from that, and we'll pick a winner of a $20 gift certificate credit to Anderson Penn's account. And ordinarily, we take a little break here and then come back with coming soon, but... There's nothing coming There soon. is something coming soon, we just can't, well, talk, we can't about talk about it. can't talk about it. You'll know tomorrow, on the 1st. On the 1st, July 1st yes. is a big day. Um, and I don't even think we can say what it is. It's just uh, a couple of things from Estabrook. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, and, uh, I, we I, could I, just sit here coming soon and then wait until... Yeah, well, let's just, we just sit here and wait. just stare at the camera. And in the meantime, why don't you try reading that last <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Tune in next time for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. You can check us out on social media as Anderson Pens. I understand, Brian. There is a store in Chicago. There is. Ground floor of the Palmer House Hilton. Open seven days a week. You'll find Lisa there. Lisa Anderson herself? With the Winnie the Pooh. She has a Winnie the Pooh at the moment. Um, Does it have a website? Chicago.AndersonPens.com like this video please and consider subscribing to our youtube channel and if you've made it this far something just for you this little gem butterflies they're not what they used to be bye